Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here, where as you, as, uh, you guys probably saw in the title, uh, today I'm putting away 30 pounds of pancake mix, which is this right here. Uh, they sell these at Costco's, and I really like these pancakes, all right? I don't know if you guys have tried them or not, but they're really good. They come in 10 pound bags. So I'm putting away 30 pounds of pancake mix, and I'm also putting away, I don't know if you guys can see this other... No, you guys can't see the other five gallon pail, barely. Uh, 30 pounds of flour. Now, the process by which uh, I store this for long term is pretty much the same for any dry storage, right? But when I'm putting away flour products, you know, like obviously pancake mix is just flour with other ingredients and uh, flour itself, I do take one extra step than what I take with like, for example, the cereal that I put away the other day. I do take an extra step to make sure that the mylar seals well. Uh, now, having said that, uh, before I show you guys that real quick, I just wanted to mention something real quick for those of you that maybe haven't seen one of these videos that I've done before and putting away dry products for long-term storage. Before I put my flour in here, actually, this one's got the pancake, this one's got the flour. All right, I've got 30 pounds of flour in here. And uh, I've got 30 pounds of pancake in the other uh, five gallon bucket. Before I put it away, uh, that flour and that pancake mix that I put in here, I left in the freezer for like three days, all right? I left it in there for three full days. After the third day, I took it out of the freezer and I just put it at room temperature for about another two days, all right? Uh, I've never stored something right after taking it out of the freezer. Not because I know this could happen, because I don't, because I've never done it. But my theory is that if you store something in here that is really cold, then there could be a chance of some condensation building up inside uh, when the cold meets the ambient temperature of your room. So I didn't want to take that chance. So I always let everything that I'm going to store get down to room temperature, and then I put it away. Now, when you're storing a product that's that's powdery, all right, I always make sure that before I seal it, that I take a sponge and I wipe the inside off, all right, of the edge that I'm going to seal. And then I take a towel and I make sure it's nice and dry, and then I let it sit for a little bit to make sure that it's completely dry before I do that just to make sure that there's no flour or no powdery substance on there that will impede the sealing process when I try to seal it, okay? Now, for these, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the cereal. I'm gonna put a 2000 cc oxygen absorber. So I have to open a new uh, pack of uh, Mylar bags and each 10 pack of Mylar bag that you buy uh, I've got the link in the description, and these are the exact same ones that that link will take you to. It brings you a an envelope like this that's got 10 5-gallon Mylar bags in it. And inside of that envelope with the Mylar bags, you're going to get a package like this that has 10 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers. Okay, Now, 2,000 cc's from my experience, is plenty big enough for a five-gallon pail, all right, or for a five-gallon bucket, all right? It's plenty big enough. The same thing is going to happen with this, like happened with the cereal. If you guys saw the follow-up video that I did with the cereal, I showed you how the bag uh, shrunk in on itself, okay? Uh, there's one other thing that I want to make sure that I cover with you guys on the oxygen absorbers. So if you see these little packets in there see the three little dots they're like pink so these three little dots being pink tells you that there's no oxygen inside of this packet but i would not trust that because uh it only takes one good oxygen absorber to get rid of the oxygen inside this packet so always check your oxygen absorbers before you put them into your packaging and uh, always check your packaging a day or two later to make sure that uh, the bag shrunk in on itself at least a little bit, all right? Because that's what's telling you that that oxygen absorber that you used is good. 
someone could put nine bad oxygen absorbers in this package, all right, and one good one, and this little indicator here, or this little meter, whatever you want to call it, would still show that there's no oxygen in the package, all right, because one good oxygen absorber will take care of all the oxygen in this small envelope, all right? So I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that. Do, do not trust this, all right? Trust your experience and trust your own eyes, all right? So when you take your oxygen absorber out, you're going to make sure that, you know, it's powdery on the inside, all right? You're going to make sure that it's malleable and that it doesn't feel hard, all right, to the touch. All right? I'm going to take these out right now, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, seal at least one of these, all right, so that you guys can see how I seal it in case you've never seen, seen me seal these before, seen how I do it. Getting that one ready right there. Okay, so all right, so having said that, let me go over something really quick, also. Okay, so this here five gallon bucket has 30 pounds of flour. Okay, and uh, obviously, the other one has 30 pounds of pancakes. But some people are gonna say, or some people have said in the past, well. We're only a family of two or three, you know, we don't really need to put away, a, you know, a bucket of flour or a bucket of this or that. But you have to take into consideration that if you're dipping into this, all right, once you pack this, if you, or at least in my case, once I pack this for long-term storage, I'm going to dip into it if I ever need to, okay? Because once this is packed, if packed correctly, it should be good for at least, you know, between 10 and 20 years easily. All right. Now, I'm sure that I'll rotate this out at least once in the next 20 years. That's too easy to do because we, we you know, use a lot of flour here. However, what I want you to remember is, is that uh, a five-gallon bucket of flour or even pancake mix is really not that much. All right. Once you open this, you have two options. You can either leave it open. All right, and continue to use the product until it's gone, or you can open it, take out what you need, all right, for maybe like the next month or so, and then seal it back up. But in reality, 30 pounds of flour is only going to make you about roughly between 30 and 35 loaves of bread, okay? So think about that. If you're dipping into this because you have to, and you're making even just one loaf of bread per day, there's only enough flour here to make enough bread for about a month, a month and a week, all right? So it's really not that much when you really think about it, okay? And you would probably use flour for making other things other than just bread, all right? So this, I don't consider this being a lot to store in just one container, all right? Because I know that if I made one loaf of bread a day, this is only going to last me a little over a month, okay? So it's really not that much. Uh... Same thing with the pancake mix, all right? The pancake mix, 30 pounds equals to around 270 or so servings, all right? So 30 pounds, 270 servings, you know, you take that and you divide it by however many people in your house. If you're going to eat pancakes two times a week or three times a week or even just once a week, right? You divide that in there and in my opinion, once I divide the number of people that are in my house into the number of servings and I decide how many times or we decide how many times on average we're going to eat pancakes a week as long as it's less than a year that that five gallon bucket is going to last me I'm going to go ahead and open it and I'm going to leave it open and just continue to use it knowing that that's going to be gone within a year okay so that's just my opinion ladies and gentlemen you guys can put in your comments and let me know what you guys think or if you have any better ideas all right i know that some people like to package things in one gallon uh mylar bags which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that the only thing that i personally don't like about that all right because it's my style all right not that there's anything wrong with packing in one gallon mylar bags is that it's easier for me to store in bulk using the five gallon buckets all right, uh, then if I were having to take one gallon Mylar bags full of whatever it could be and trying to stack them in totes or, you know, or in an area where it's going to make sense and uh, there's going to be enough room for me to stack them, you know. So doing it this way is easier for me because I've got a spot where I can stack five gallon buckets and the temperature stays exactly where it's supposed to be all year round. All right, so that's my take on storing large quantities 
of anything in five gallon buckets is you have to really look at your situation and how fast do you think it's going to take you to go through this stuff okay so let me go ahead and open these oxygen absorbers keep in mind that before you open your oxygen absorbers make sure that you have uh, a way to get them out of the open as soon as possible at least the ones you're not going to use right uh, have a way ready to go so that as soon as you open that package you can put away all of your extras in here and put the ones in your buckets that you're going to need okay so i already have my i have two of these mason jars ready and i've got my lids and rings ready for as soon as i open these up okay so let's go ahead and open these up oh these actually come with a these actually come with a little rip tab right there i don't know if you can see it or not it's right here I'll open these up and usually when I open these up, I try to be very, very quick about it because I don't want these going back. Oh, and another thing, check this out. So you hear that? It's nice and powdery inside, all right? And it's real pliable. It's not hard. If this was really hard, stiff, I would be very uh, careful. I would really be watching this good to make sure that they're working. But this one, I can tell, feels pretty good. Okay, I'll take my other one, put it in here. And you don't have to be trying to rush, rush, rush when you get these, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Just uh, take your time, all right? But don't take forever to put them up, okay? And it's just as easy as putting these in here, and you're good to go. You put your lid on it. And with that many oxygen absorbers in there, that lid should seal, all right, within minutes, Shouldn't take a day or nothing like that. It should seal within minutes. And probably by the time we're done here, I'll probably see if, if uh, see this one right here? Can you hear this? We'll see if uh, this one seals up. And when I put these on, I put them on nice and tight too, okay? So again, for those of you that haven't seen me do this before, all I do is I just get a board of wood, okay? I put it on here, all right, where it's nice and even. I try to take out as much air as I can, all right? But it's not 100% necessary that you get every bit of air out of there because uh, the oxygen absorber will do its job and shrink that bag in on itself, all right? And now, as far as ironing this, it's ironing, ladies and gentlemen. It's not rocket science. Anybody can do this. Uh, like I've said in my other videos, there are... There are machines that are made specifically for this, okay? But I'm not going to go out and buy something to add to my collection of things that I don't need, all right? This does the job just fine. And if you don't have an iron or, or a hair straightener, you can always, you can always go to a thrift, thrift store and pick one up for cheap more than likely, okay? So now you see that? That's nice and sealed. It's ready to go. All right, let me go ahead and do the other one since that one was really quick. All right, here's the other one. And I already cleaned, cleaned the inside of this one as well. All right. I haven't marked these yet, so I have to remember which one's pancake and which one's flour. This one here is the pancake dude, right here that I'm doing now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to put away other breakfast items besides pancake mix. <laughs> all right, like uh, put away some oats, all right? Uh, believe it or not, wheat berries, when I was deployed, the uh, people that worked in the uh, dining facility, some of them were from India, and they used to make this breakfast that was made out of wheat berries. They'd take them and they'd soak them overnight, and then they'd mix them, mix it with like brown sugar and some, some sweet spices, and it was really, really good. So there's a lot of things that you can do with different products, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to cover today, all right? I hope that I didn't bore you to death. And for those of you that had never seen this process before, I hope that you, uh, that this encourages you to go out there and, you know, get some bulk items because it's not expensive. And buy on sale. Just for your information, the 30 pounds of flour that I put in there, 
I paid on average $1.23 per five pound bag, all right? Those were the ones, and I think I did a payday prep with those a while back, all right? I think I paid $1.22 for four of them, and I paid $1.25 for two of them, all right? They were different brands, but they're white flour, all right? So it doesn't matter that they're different brands. So I paid on average $1.23 or so per bag, so I've got seven dollars and uh fifty cents let's say in flour 30 pounds of flour for about seven dollars and fifty cents all right now when i bought them i didn't buy them all at the same time you know they were on sale and i got a few and i stocked them up until i had enough to fill one of these up and look at that i got myself 35 to 38 loaves of bread for seven bucks all right or seven dollars and fifty cents you can't beat that, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end it at that. Like I said, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, uh, please share. Please like. If you're if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Trust me, you're going to really enjoy our community, all right? We have a great community. And, uh, oh, look, I almost forgot. Little Miss Alaska Prepper reminded me. Here's the uh, jar. Remember that it, yep, and look at that. It's sealed. There's There's no give at all. Let me see. There's no give at all. Let me see the other one. That's very sealed. The other one, no give at all. So you see, it already sealed it up because I mean, you got 8,000 cc's in each in each jar. That's gonna soak the oxygen up in there right quick. All right. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, having said that, uh, have a good day, uh, and remember to be good to each other because when good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and it will be a better place. Uh, many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.